And it's also designed for the stress the woman's under. What is she facing? What's happening with her will affect her milk to then program the baby with the type of threat they're facing to select the genes to be flipped on. That's in the studies. Now, how, now, how, how nanotech is that of God or the universe, whatever you want to call it, that whatever the woman's going through in her pregnancy, her stress, whatever she's going through, whatever she's got deficiencies in, everything, it, it, while the baby's in utero, through the placenta, the body's trying to get the baby ready for whatever it's facing in the environment. When the baby comes out, the milk is now programming for whatever the woman's facing through the baby to activate genes. And that's in major studies. He's here to join us just on that one area. You, you go look at the major... In fact, you guys can do this. Run to HEB and buy me a couple of the establishment formulas right now. I got some... I don't have any cash left in my wallet. Just grab it from Weldon. Run there quick before Fuchs has to leave us 20 minutes in the next hour. Because I meant to do this and I forgot to do it. I want to show you what we've done on air before with Mike Adams when he came in. I mean, it's like 50% sugar or, or high fructose corn syrup, 25% more sugar, 75% sugar, almost no fat. And then it's not even the type of fat you need. Then it's soy that basically programs the male babies to be feminine. I mean, we've got the expert here to join us, brightsideben.com. He joins us uh, now to break this down. But imagine the diabolical nature of taking, I mean, women have breasts for a reason. All mammals have them. Whales, you name it. It's not a conspiracy theory. Babies need mother's milk. That's why genetically men like women with nice breasts. Because, you know, genetically we're saying that can produce a lot of milk. You know, women with wide hips. That's you know, Marilyn Monroe. This is a woman that can have kids. This is a woman that's feminine, wants to take care of babies. Well, they don't want women feminine. They don't want men to be warriors. They're attacking the species like the globalist or an alien programming group. And I don't believe that's what they are, but I'm saying it might as well be that. They're psychopaths who are alien to the normal human activity who have scientifically decided to destroy us. Pharmacist Ben Fuchs, we're skipping this network break. It's so important. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you've heard my layman's breakdown of these reports we're going to go over. Break it down for us. Well, here's the bottom line. Epigenetics means power, and it means power for us. Genetics, the, the notion of genetics has to do with destiny. It says that whatever is in your genes is the way you're going to be. And this is one of the most disempowering ideas in all of health and in all of biology. The idea of epigenetics and the idea of a transcendent level of control over the genome, which is what breast milk represents, by the way, puts the power back in the hands of the individual, takes the power away from the hands of the, the leviathan, as I call it the beast, the state, the model, however you want to term it. And this is one of the most powerful ideas that we have in all of health. And it's something that we, we've known about for a long time, but because of the hegemony of the medical model, the hegemony of the medical professionals, most people believe that what is ever gonna, whatever is in their genes is the way that they're going to be. How many times have you heard people say, oh, it's just in my genes, oh, that's my genetics, oh, it runs in the family. The notion that there is a control point that is transcendent or epi, that's what the word epi means, to genetic destiny is a powerful, powerful idea for the individual, and it's something that we want to exploit. You were bringing, uh, you bringing, uh, uh, bringing to, uh, uh, to the forefront the idea of breast milk. Breast milk is an epigenetic vehicle that is designed to turn genes on and off in response to the environment that both the mother is confronting and the baby is confronting. Please, mothers, breast milk is a divine programming source. Alex, you hit the nail on the head. You called it a, a high-tech programming device. That's really what it is. It's a divine programming device that's designed to keep a baby healthy. We know that epigenetic factors Let's just in face breast it. milk... Women's breasts are magical. <laughs> That's right. They're, everything about them is magical. But what they secrete is especially magical in terms of epigenetics, the factors in breast milk, breast milk, aside from the nutritional factors. You know, you can get formula that has the vitamins and you can get formula that has the minerals and some of the cofactors. But these epigenetic factors are things that we've just begun to understand over the last 20 or 30 years. Formulas don't contain those. It's literally full of the antibodies, everything. And, and again, quantifying this from the studies, but I want you to expand on it with your expertise studying this for years. Pharmacist Ben Fuchs joining us is that suddenly there's all these genetic disorders and people are suddenly, you know, 10,000% increases in, 
in pediatric children's cancers, 3,000% in breast cancer. And they go, oh, it's because you have bad genes. Well, right. of course, if you're not getting what you need, you are predisposed in your genes to malfunction this way if you don't have the building blocks and you weren't breastfed and you're give, if you're, instead you're given a bunch of deadly vaccines. They want their system. I mean, why should anyone get a hepatitis shot at birth? I mean, is the baby going to be having, you know, sex? Or is the baby going to be injecting heroin? And right. it's, it's incredible. Breast milk is the best vaccination you could get. It's God's vaccination. Breast milk protects us from uh, fatty liver disease. It protects us from autoimmune disease. It protects us from cancer. It protects us from cholesterol and blood fats. It protects us from heart disease. These are factors that are in breast milk that the baby is going to get and that are going to impart protection for the baby for the rest of the baby's life. This is so important. And that doesn't even include the psychological benefits, uh, the psychological benefits to these epigenetic factors. We know epigenetic fact, lack of these epigenetic factors can result in, in, in stress diseases and in, in uh, uh, alert helplessness, emotional disorders, autism, schizophrenia. This is above and beyond the, the protection that we get from physical maladies. And by now the way, talking, while you're talking, I'm showing mainstream research papers from prestigious universities. This is well known. That this has been well known. I graduated pharmacy school in 1986. I had professors telling me about epigenetics back then. Today we're starting to hear about it more and more, but we've known about a, a control point of the genetics, a control point to genes for 50 or 60 years. In fact, the word epigenetics was coined, coined in the 1950s, I believe. So these are not new ideas. These may be new ideas to the mainstream, but these are not new ideas to biologists. By the way, I'm life. showing .gov, the Centers for Disease Control, the NIH, you name it, they're all admitting this. Well, geneticists know yeah, this idea of one gene, one protein, one gene, one disease. Today I was reading about how they found the gene for baldness. You know how you hear this every once in a while? Yeah. Oh, they found the gene for Alzheimer's disease. They found the gene for cancer. There is no one gene for baldness or for Alzheimer's disease for, or for cancer. Genes turn on and off based on epigenetic factors that are nutritional, that are emotional, that are psychological. And what's more, and this is very important when it comes to things like genetic mo genetically modified organisms, genes relate to other other genes and turn on and off via communication with other genes. So when you manipulate the genome by pulling in, pulling out genes or putting in genes, you're manipulating the entire genome. And you never have no idea what you're going to be getting. This is such an important idea for, for scientists who to be so glib with the fundamental component of the intelligence of life, which is what the genome is, is uh, Well, obviously, it, it's mammals need their mother's milk. And they've pretty much got it to the point where they harass women that try to breastfeed. The media acts like it's weird. I mean, if they have their way, someday it will be a, a conspiracy theory to say that women ever even breastfed or even gave birth. Notice how they, like 60 some percent of hospitals now, force women to have cesareans because then every other baby they get to do that. Uh, it affects the child. Uh, I, oh, mean, yeah. I mean, it's Cesarean. just all a scam. When a baby comes out of the womb, it's coated with bacteria, and that bacteria become that baby's personal health guardians for the rest of that baby's life. That bacteria, those bacteria that coat the baby as it, as it leaves the womb and enters into the world, they get into the baby's mouth, they go into the baby's digestive tract, they implant in the baby's womb. Those bacteria protect a baby from colon cancer, from digestive distress, from heart disease, from, from uh, uh, emotional disorders from autism and when you have a baby who's born cesarean he's completely deprived of those bacteria so what do the what do the doctors tell you oh we'll just give you a little supplement we'll give you a little probiotic we'll give you a little formula this is not the divine way this is not the way that nature has intended it has intended babies to be born into the world it's no wonder alex that we're confronted with the largest chronic disease crisis in the history of mankind despite the fact that we have the most medicine. It's no wonder people are on antibiotics from birth till death. It's no wonder people glow in the dark now and, and you know, look like they can't even pick up a five pound weight. Oh, and we haven't even gotten to the bisphenol A and the pesticides and the, the toxic effects of uh, epigenetics, the, the relationship between poisons, the relationship between pollutants, the relationship between uh, prescription medications and the genome. Well, I want we you to get into that in the next segment, but right now, because I heard your show a few weeks ago, you were breaking it all down, get into the science, the different cofactors that's in the breast milk so people understand how important this is that the major wiring of the brain happens the first two years 
uh, you know, and, and then up to age five, it's fully mapping. I mean, this is the time they tell, put kids on low fat diets. Well, it's trans fats that are bad. Don't children need more fat than adults? Heck yes, and what's more, they need more cholesterol than adults. How do you like that? Cholesterol, which we've been talking about on this, you, know, you and I have been talking about it for, for probably for three or four years now about how important cholesterol is. Cholesterol is a prime building substance, not just for, for cells, not just for muscles, but for the brain and for the nervous system. Alex, it's like there's a, a conspiracy to destroy our minds. There's a conspiracy to destroy our ability to think clearly. There's a, a, a conspiracy to destroy the prefrontal cortex, the executive center, the choice center, the part of our brain that makes us human. There's a conspiracy to promote the lizard brain, the reptilian brain, the, the survival brain, the fear brain, the part of our brain that shuts down our ability to heal and to thrive. We are in survival mode psychologically, we're in survival mode emotionally, and now we're in survival mode epigenetically and physically through manipulation of the genome through prescription drugs, through poisons in the environment, and through lack of information, through misunderstandings that promote the idea that we have to be what our genetics say we are. The fact of the matter is you go to any geneticist and they'll tell you that this idea of one gene being related to one protein or one gene being related to one kind of specific physical feature is not true. It's simplistic and it's ignorant and it, what's worse, it's a, a control trip and it's a, a profit center as well because it allows pharmacology, uh, pharmaceutical companies to come up with medications that manipulate the genes. And this is what the latest, the latest uh, ph pharmaceuticals do. They work at the genetic level be, uh, uh, pr with this idea that by pharmacologically addressing the gene, by pharmacologically changing the gene, you can impart health. How the heck can a human being who knows nothing about the genetics of the body, which is really basically what we know, we, one to two percent of the genes. Well, just is thought to well, be let me interrupt. Just look at what antibiotics were great but overused, all the nightmares they created. Look at how everything ends up turning out to be worse down the road. Can now, you they, now they've got thousands of facilities with gene guns, as you right. know, just randomly splicing RNA, DNA, chimeras. I mean, uh, talk Can about that some. What do you make well, of crossing? Chimeras? Yeah. Yeah, well, H.G. Wells, wrote, how do you like the fact that H.G. Wells wrote The Island of Dr. Moreau in 1896? 100, 120 years ago, he knew that there would be this idea of manipulating uh, genomes of different animals, building things together, creating these He wrote about atomic wars in 1900. He was a master Illuminati. Is, is, isn't that amazing how he knew all this stuff? It's crazy. But the idea of chimeras is, is really what we're confronting. This is the, the, the next likely step in genetic modification. We have GMO plants, which are basically chimera plants. How how big a leap is it to chimera animals? How big a leap is it to chimera ha, humanoids, for that matter? They've already done it. They don't have any rights. They just keep them in laboratories. It's on record. Uh, but, I mean, you know, the animal rights groups talk about animals having rights, which I agree they do have some, obviously. How we treat animals is how we treat ourselves, especially the higher order, elephants, dogs, you name it. But, but what about these chimeras? Don't they have rights, you know, these, <laughs> these pigs that have human right. genetics in them? Right, Chimera writes, that's the next step, you know? I mean, we have, we, it truly is a, a scary world that we're confronting. But Alex, I'll tell you, I, and I've said this so many times, we can't let fear get the best of us. We've got to expose this. We've got to not participate in the system that is not designed for our benefit. It's designed for, as you said, a select few, an elite few. And we have to refuse to participate in this in, in all ways. We have to stop eating the corporate swill. We have to stop participating in the medical model. We have to begin to understand how to control our own bodies, because at the end of the day we do have no no i agree in the control. next segment i want to get into solutions but uh, and i want to be clear and I, i'm not saying you're saying this but i want to be clear i'm not fear-mongering i want people to know how bad it is like telling my neighbor hey your house is on fire right you have to know exactly because people need to know we're already deep into this we are deep into this. That's absolutely the case. I mean, well, by the time the lay public hears about something, it's already been in the in the scientific literature for decades, sometimes for three or four, even five decades. So if you hear about something in the New York Times or in the Daily News or in Time Magazine or Newsweek, you can rest assured that scientists have been discussing this in the literature for decades, and it's the same with epigenetics and genetics. Uh, genetics, uh, the, the genome was discovered in the 1950s. Epigenetic, the ideas of epigenetics was discovered shortly thereafter. Today, we know that our genes blink on 
on and off like Christmas tree lights, but still, not only does the average person not understand this, the average medical professional doesn't understand this, that our genes are as flexible as our environment, and this is the beautiful thing about epigenetics. Epigenetics are the way, is the way that the genes read the environment. Could the it become a drug to have uh, lactating women uh, start selling their colostrum to people that never had it, even though you won't get your family's genetic history, you will get the genetic history of those people? You know, if you think breast milk is powerful, and breast milk is powerful medicine, colostrum is is the breast milk of the breast milk. It's the it's the core of the breast milk. It is the most concentrated food on the planet. I want you to describe what comes out the first few days, then the weeks, then months, and then I want to get into solutions. But then I also want to look at what you're saying about epigenetics, the negative stuff. What is the bisphenol A doing? What is the uh, other chemicals out there like the glyphosate? What is it doing with our genes? Well, they admit it. It's flipping on the breast cancer. We'll be right back with Ben Fugue. Stay with us. We're on the march. The Empire.